In, in this video, we're going to look at uh, you know, fraction numbers and the decimal representation of it. You know, we call it repeating decimal. Uh, we're going to look at that. All right, so in, in general, a fraction number is just um, you know, a number x in the form of uh, p over q. Here, uh, p and q are positive numbers and uh, you know, uh, I mean positive, uh, positive integers. And we assume the fraction is in the reduced form that is p and q are co-prime or in other words p and q does not have any common factors other than number one all right so for example four over six is not in the reduced form because four and six share a common factor of two right but four over five is now of course um, you know we gonna start with something simple let's say you know one over seven so when p equal to one and q equal to seven so what is the decimal representation of it? Let's examine that first. All right, we try to evaluate fraction one over seven. We we'll try to use non-division to calculate the decimal representation of this fraction. Of course, I assume you are familiar with the process of non-division. If not, it's a good idea to pause the video and uh, you know do some research, and maybe try out a few examples you know on the uh, actual method, you know, and so that is it. Uh, you're familiar with the steps. So here, as you can see, one is smaller than seven, so we put a zero in the quotient on the top. All right. So, um, so we're gonna extend, you know, the decimal points and add zeros to, you know, begin the non-division process. So here, the remainder would be three if, uh, let's say, we, we got a one zero, one ten, you know. 1 times 7 is equal to 7, the remainder would be 3, all right? So the remainder is non-zero. So we know that it's non-division will terminate if we get remainder 0, and that means we may have a finite, you know, number of digits for the decimal. In this case, we have to continue, you know, 3 is non-zero. So we're going to add an, another 0 uh, to append, you know, the decimal digits and continue the, you know, non-division process. So in that case, if we add a zero, you're going to have four times seven equal 28. And the difference is two, which is the new remainder. All right. So again, you know, two is non-zero. So we have to uh, continue with the process. All right. So two, seven would be 14. And 20 minus 14, the difference is six. So the next remainder is six. All right. So as you can see here, we got non-zero you know, remainder and each time is a different value, we have one at the beginning and then, you know, we, of course we treat that as a remainder and then three, two, six, all right? So it's all different, all right? So we continue with the process and uh, put a 60 and then seven, eight, 56, the difference would be four. All right, still it's different, and, you know, from the previous one. Now, however, if we go to four, zero, you know, for the next one, with a five, you know, 55, the difference is five, all right? Still, you know, another, you know, new value for the remainder, you know? So we have uh, five, zero, and seven, seven, 49, the remainder is one. Now here, however, we have seen number one before, right? We started with it at the very beginning. So, you know, think about it, right? We, we append another zero here, so what's the next value, you know, in, in, on, the, on the top? So you will see, you know, because we just did that at the very beginning, right? So you would think, you know, the process would be first, you know, identical to the steps that we have just done, right? So look at uh, the initially we have uh, uh, one zero and here we have one zero. So what value to put here? All right. So uh, realizing that, uh, you know, uh, we initially have the same setup, which is a one zero and we put a one here and then the remainder is three. So you can imagine that uh, from this point on, you know, the process is going to repeat in the previous steps. So in other words, you're going to put a one on the top, right? And then the remainder would be one, three, two, four, six, four, five, one, two, in that sequence. And uh, similarly, you know, the, on the top is going to be repeating that sequence, one, four, two, eight, five, seven, all right? So here, uh, pretty much, you know, we examine the, uh, long division process and and figure out that uh, 
you know, it's actually repeating itself. That's good news. So it's one, four, two, eight, five, seven, keep repeating. Now in terms of math notation, you know, some people use, uh, you know, for example, um, you know, how to represent the fact that it's repeating itself, right? You can use parentheses to say that, oh, this block, you know, is actually repeating. One, four, two, eight, five, seven in the parentheses. Or in some other cases, you use uh, you know, a bar on the top saying that, okay, this portion is actually repeating itself. So basically, this is just different representation. You know, for the purpose of uh, this video, we're going to use uh, parentheses because it's easier for the computer to print out you know, parentheses. All right, so that's um, uh, what I'm going to do you know, with parentheses no notation here. Now, we, we're going to ask ourselves, you know, is 1 over 7 special? What about other fraction numbers? You know, do they also either terminate or, you know, have a pattern that is repeating itself? And the answer is yes, uh, but we're going to examine why that is the case. So, for example, we're going to look at generic case. What if other numbers, you know, what will happen? All right.